good morning everyone uh, today we are going to see about the midbrain okay so already pons medulla everything is over so you have an idea how to deal with the neuroanatomy lectures okay so you know the order how to present okay so in this class i am going to discuss about the midbrain in this following headings first we will see what is the midbrain where it is located then we, we are going to discuss about the external features then internal features then blood supply of midbrain then few applied aspects we are going to uh, see now okay first midbrain so what is midbrain midbrain is the structure it connects the forebrain with the hindbrain so you know this is the forebrain this is the hindbrain in between these two you can see a short segment of the brain stem that is the midbrain here also you can see this is the cerebrum you know cerebellum this is the uh, brain stem it's okay you know it's made up of midbrain pons medulla okay so this pons medulla cerebellum they are the hindbrain this is the forebrain in between that you can able to see a short segment that is the midbrain midbrain also called as mesencephalon so it is also called as mesencephalon before going to the uh, uh, other important things first we'll refresh the development okay as you know a brain developed from three primary brain vesicles so the topmost one is the forebrain also called as prosencephalon the next part is the mesencephalon that is the midbrain the last part is the prosencephalon hindbrain so during development these three brain vesicles primary brain vesicles becomes five secondary brain vesicles this prosencephalon it is divided into telencephalon and diencephalon mesencephalon it is as same as a midbrain okay it is same it won't divide this rhombencephalon it again divides into metencephalon myelencephalon okay then later what happens this telencephalon it expands laterally and this going to develop as the cerebral hemispheres this a space within the cerebral hemispheres they are going to develop as the ventricles so within the cerebral hemisphere you can see the lateral ventricle now coming to this this is the diencephalon here also you can see the diencephalon this from this diencephalon only you can able to see the thalamus hypothalamus everything okay so within that you can see a cavity that is the third ventricle then when you see the midbrain it is as Uh, as the same within that you can see a narrow duct that is named as cerebral aqueduct when you see the rhombencephalon it's already divided into metencephalon and myelencephalon this metencephalon and myelencephalon this is going to develop as cerebellum pons and medulla oblongata this metencephalon it's develops into cerebellum and pons this myelencephalon it gives rise to medulla oblongata the cavity inside it gives rise to the fourth ventricle okay now we have to concentrate in the midbrain it is also called as mesencephalon within the uh, midbrain that is here that, that is named as cerebral aqueduct which connects the third ventricle with the fourth ventricle okay so with this knowledge we'll go to the further process now we'll see about the midbrain so from where to where it extends it extends from pons to the diencephalon as you know this is the diencephalon this part of the diencephalon so from the pons to the diencephalon this midbrain lies it is about 2.5 cm long and 2.5 cm wide within that you can see a duct okay that is the cerebral aqueduct this is the cerebral aqueduct it's also called as aqueduct of sylvius aqueduct of sylvius okay this is the aqueduct of sylvius now we'll see the external features of the midbrain 
when you see the, see here this is the pons this is the medulla here you can see the cerebellum so this is the diencephalon area so between diencephalon and pons you can see the midbrain this is the ventral surface this one is the dorsal surface okay so this is the ventral surface and this is the dorsal surface now in external features we are going to see ventral surface and dorsal surface surface separately so we have to discuss what are the features in the ventral surface and the dorsal surface first we'll see about the ventral surface in the ventral surface you can able to see two pillar like structures that is named as crus cerebri or crura cerebri okay so on either side you can see a pillar that is the crus cerebri so you know this is the pons here is the diencephalon in between you can see a short segment that is the midbrain on either side you can able to see the crura cerebri so from that to where it extends from the cranial border of the pons because this is the pons no so from the cranial border of the pons to the cerebral hemisphere this midbrain this crura cerebri extends when you see clearly within that crura cerebri you can able to see some longitudinal fibers okay this uh, corrugations this is due to the presence of the longitudinal fibers passing from the cerebrum to the midbrain to the midbrain and also it passes through the pons okay so in the ventral surface two things uh, you can see one is crura cerebri okay next so in this picture all itself we can see this is the crus cerebri no then what are the other things you can see here two round elevations you can see that is named as mammillary body on either side you can see this is the two round elevation that is the mammillary body okay then you uh, you can see this is the star infundibular star okay then here you can see numerous perforations that is named as posterior perforated substance posterior perforated substance then on either side of the crus cerebri you can see two nerves are emerging this nerve is the oblomotor nerve it is arising medial to the crus cerebri from lateral part you can see one more nerve that is the trochlear nerve okay again we are going to discuss this now so this um, midbrain it is located no here it also forms a boundary for interpeduncular fossa okay this crura cerebri this um, this is nothing but the midbrain part so this one is going to form a fossa so in between your fossa is there on either side crus cerebri is there no so that is going to form the boundary for the interpeduncular fossa so why it is called as interpeduncular fossa this this is like a peduncle okay this is the Cere cerebral peduncles okay so it's like a pillar no so these two things they form the boundary for a fossa that fossa is the interpeduncular fossa so the same thing what we discussed earlier medially you can see oblomotor nerve laterally you can see the trochlear nerve emerging out so in the interpeduncular fossa you can see two mammillary bodies posterior perforated substance you can see okay now what are the structures crossing the crus cerebri now you know what is crus cerebri now we have to know what are the structures passing through the crus cerebri so over the crus cerebri you can see few structures see here this is the optic tract this is the optic tract these two things they are the optic tract okay then so this one is crossing the crus cerebri then see here this blue color that is the basal vein that is the basal vein okay then two arteries you can see one is posterior cerebral artery another one is superior cerebellar artery so posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery also you can see over the crus cerebri so uh, we are discussing the midbrain now first we have learned what is midbrain from where it arises what is the other name for midbrain so everything we learned 
The next one we are discussing about the external features of midbrain. In the external features, we have to discuss this in two headings like ventral surface, dorsal surface. In the ventral surface, we are discussing the features now. In the ventral surface, few things are there. First one is the crest cerebrae or crura cerebrae. That one we are discussing now. The rest of the things are mammillary bodies are there, infundibular stalk is there, and also posterior perforated substance is there. Still, we are in the crest cerebrae. Okay, so as you know, this crest cerebrae it forms the boundary for the interpedicular fossa. That's the first point. Now, over the crest cerebrae, few structures are crossing. So what are the structures? So that also we are discussing now. So you know, this is the optic tract. So we have the basal vein, then we have the posterior cerebral artery, then superior cerebral artery. All these four structures, it lies over the crescent. Okay. Now we'll see about the interpedantular fossa. So this interpedantular fossa, it lies in the midbrain in between two crest cerebrae. So this fossa is named as interpedantular fossa. Now we have to know what are the boundaries of interpedicular fossa. So this is the interpedicular fossa. So what is seen above? Above you can able to see optic chiasma. Laterally, okay, this is anterior lateral and here posterior lateral. Anterior laterally you can see optic tract. Posterior laterally you can see the crest cerebrae. Below you can see the superior border of the pons. Okay, so what are the boundaries for the interpedental fossa? Anteriorly optic chiasma, anterolaterally optic tract, posterolaterally crust cerebrae or crota cerebrae, posteriorly cranial part of the pons. Again, you can see here, see above optic chiasma, below this is the pons, anterolaterally on either side optic tract, posterolaterally on either side crust cerebrae or crota cerebrae. Now, this is called as flow. So what are the structures in the flow? The floor of the fossa contains infundibular stem with tuba cinerium, mammillary bodies, posterior perforated substance. Okay, so here you can see this is the infundibular stem of tuba cinerium. On either side you can see mammillary bodies and here you can see the posterior perforated substance. So these are the structures seen in the floor of the interpedicular fossa. Okay. Now, laterally, what is the? So this is the crusty by Laterally, what is the? You know, there is a nerve arising. That is the trochlear nerve. They are arising from the sulcus present in the lateral border. Then one more structure is the, see, this is the uh, section of the midbrain. We are waving from the brain from below. Okay, from below we are seeing the brain. So in that you can see the cut section of the midbrain. So this is the lateral sulcus. So here only trochlear nerves going to arise. Lateral to that you can see a part of the cerebral hemisphere that is the parahippocampal gyrus. Parahippocampal gyrus. And also temporal lobe also will be seen laterally. This parahippocampal gyrus, it belongs to limbic system. Okay, it belongs to limbic system that we are going to discuss in later classes. Okay, so lateral to the crest cerebrae, what is the trochlear nerve is there? Then we have parahippocampal gyrus. Okay, so these are the structures seen in the ventral surface. Now we are going to discuss about the dorsal surface. See, whatever we discuss now. Are the features present here? Okay, see the cursor. So, what are the structures present here? That only we discuss. So, this is ventral surface. See, this is the midbrain. See, you can clearly see the cerebral aqueduct. So, this one, see here, this one is the dorsal surface. Okay, this is the dorsal surface. Some elevations are there. What are the elevations? Now we'll see. So, when you turn this brain, this midbrain part, you can able to see four elevation, round elevation. So these four round elevations, it is called as carpora quadrigemina. Carpora quadrigemina. Okay, that is named as carpora quadrigemina. All four together called as carpora quadrigemina. When you see above 
or superiorly two elevations are there no these two elevations are called as superior colliculus below two elevations are there no this is called as inferior colliculus so there are two superior colliculus and two inferior colliculus is there okay now we'll see about the features in this part okay so this is the carpora quadrigemina i told no it it is nothing but pair of superior and inferior colliculus so you can see the arrow marks superior colliculus inferior colliculus so these colliculus they are separated by a cruciform sulcus a plus so when you put a plus a vertical line and a horizontal line it's cruciform no so in between these uh, colliculus you can see a cruciform sulcus when you trace the vertical sulcus above it ends in pineal body it ends in pineal body when you trace the sulcus uh, vertical or uh, sulcus below it ends in a ridge that ridge is named as frenulum villi frenulum villi this median ridge it's uh, it is seen in the roof of the fourth ventricle okay so this is the frenulum villi so two uh, superior and inferior colliculus is the pair of superior and inferior colliculus is the collectively they are called as carpora quadrigemina so this is a cruciform sulcus when you trace the vertical sulcus above uh, the vertical sulcus uh, above it ends in pineal body below it ends in a median ridge that is named as frenulum villi that the ridge will be present in the superior medullary villi this part is named as superior medullary villi so in this picture also i will show here see this is the carpora quadrigemina now you know see this is the dorsal surface carpora quadrigemina so when we trace the vertical sulcus here vertical sulcus below it ends in a median ridge that i uh, told that as frenulum villi you know that uh, frenulum villi will be present in a part that is named as superior medullary villum superior medullary villum so this forms the roof for the fourth ventricle this is the fourth ventricle okay this is the roof in that roof see this is the sagittal section this is we are viewing from behind okay so this is the superior medullary villum so here also superior medullary villum in here in the middle only we have the ridge that is the frenulum villi now you understand now so what we are discussing now we are discussing the dorsal surface of the midbrain okay now let so us now you we know superior what is superior colliculus what is inferior colliculus little bit we have to discuss this in detail okay so what is this superior colliculus superior colliculus it acts as the subcortical center for visual reflexes so superior colliculus it carries it has the subcortical center for visual reflex so our visual reflex everything they are carried to the through the superior colliculus okay what is inferior colliculus it is the subcortical center for the auditory reflex so these two uh, centers they are very important for our special senses okay so the superior colliculus it contains the subcortical center for visual reflex inferior colliculus it contains the subcortical center for the auditory reflex okay from here we have to connect a few things okay the detail and all will be discussing in further classes little bit we have to know otherwise those classes will be difficult to understand okay now this superior colliculus it is connected to some geniculate body okay so those geniculate bodies they are present in the thalamus okay so in thalamus there is lateral geniculate body and medial geniculate body to the geniculate body the superior and inferior colliculus they are connected by a arm like structure that is named as brachium so there is superior brachium and inferior brachium i will show in picture see here this is the midbrain here is the pons this is the medulla this is the cerebellum so above the midbrain what will be there that is the diencephalon 
in the diencephalon you can able to see this is the thalamus posterior most part of the thalamus okay see here in the lower part of thalamus two elevations are there they are named as lateral geniculate body and medial geniculate body okay lateral geniculate body and medial geniculate body this is the lateral view showing this clearly see this brachium means arm so something is extending and is connected to the geniculate body you know that's why it is called as brachium so when you see this is the thalamus this is the lower most part two elevations are there they are the lateral and medial geniculate body see superior colliculus connected to lateral geniculate body by a brachium that is named as brachium for superior colliculus so superior colliculus connected to lateral geniculate body by superior brachium inferior colliculus connected to medial geniculate body by inferior brachium did you get this point is it clear for you are you following now see listen clearly the superior colliculus it contains the subcortical center for the visual reflex inferior colliculus it contains the subcortical center for auditory reflex okay they will be re relayed into the thalamus in thalamus there is two geniculate body one is named as lateral and medial geniculate body so the superior colliculus and geniculate bodies they are connected by superior and inferior brachium now is it clear now now we'll see the next step. so now we learned about the external features okay ventral surface we discussed dorsal surface we discussed so in ventral surface we discussed about crust cerebri then interpeduncular fossa and its contents we discussed in dorsal surface corpora quadrigemina is there they are separated by cruciform sulcus there are colliculus superior inferior colliculus is there a little bit we add few things also they are the subcortical center for visual and auditory reflex they are connected to thalamus to the lateral and medial geniculate body so external features we know now we have to know the internal features okay when you cut the superior colliculus and inferior colliculus uh, horizontally like this and you made a section in a slide you you prepare a slide with the section means you have to this you have to see it clearly you have to identify the features within the section okay so internally what is that that we are going to learn now so in a two levels we are going to discuss the internal features of midbrain one is at the level of inferior colliculi another one is at the level of superior colliculi okay so when we cut the midbrain it will be looking like this okay so this is the ventral aspect this is the dorsal aspect in the ventral aspect already we discussed now what is the crest cerebri is there okay so th th this point we already know okay so we have the crest cerebri little bit posterior to that we have a pigmented part that is named as substantia nigra okay posterior to that you can able to see a part that is named as tegmentum behind that there is a part that is named as tecta okay how we are dividing these parts means first we have to identify the cerebral aqueduct you know through the midbrain cerebral aqueduct is passing now so just uh, put a line over the cerebral aqueduct okay behind that a small posterior part is there no? that is named as tectum anterior to that cerebral aqueduct there is a large anterior part that is named as cerebral peduncle in total cerebral peduncle are you following no so we are making a cut section of the midbrain okay we are identifying the cerebral aqueduct over the cerebral aqueduct we are drawing a line okay behind the line the small posterior part is called the tectum anterior to that line that large anterior part is named as cerebral peduncle this cerebral peduncle itself made up of tegmentum substantia nigra plus cerebrae okay now you understand no so each part we are going to discuss now see here with the same picture we'll discuss 
the features in the crust cerebri substantia nigra okay that will be same for at the level of superior colliculate and also at the level of inferior colliculate but this part this part will be different okay so in superior colliculate this part will be different and also in inferior colliculate level this part will be different so this will be separately we will discuss only the crust cerebri substantia nigra features we will be discussing commonly okay now we'll see about the crust cerebri now we are going to discuss about the crust cerebri so you can see this is the crust cerebri behind that you can see the uh, substantia nigra uh, this picture is taken in the neuroanatomy bishram singh book this picture will be very clear so uh, the parts also marked here no see here within the crust cerebri you can able to see the fibers they are arising from the cerebral hemisphere they are passing through this crust cerebri they are reaching the pons medulla and also it reaches the spinal cord okay so these are the descending fibers within the crust cerebri you can see numerous descending fibers in the middle part you can able to see cortico spinal fibers and cortico nuclear fibers cortico spinal fibers they are carrying the fibers from the cerebral hemisphere and it reaches the spinal cord cortico nuclear fibers means from the cerebral hemisphere it reaches the nuclei present in the brain stem so these fibers will be seen in the middle part when you see the medial one third you can able to see fronto pontine fibers fronto pontine fibers so from the frontal lobe to the pons when you see in the lateral uh, one sixth you can see temporo pontine parieto pontine occipito pontine so there is four lobes no so they are arising from the cerebral hemisphere to the pons they will be lying on either side okay so laterally you can able to see temporo pontine parieto pontine occipito pontine fibers medially you can see fronto pontine fibers in the middle you can see the cortico spinal cortico nuclear fibers so these are the fibers descending fibers seen in the crest cerebri Okay, so it will be like this. So from the cerebral fibers, the fibers arise. They will be passing in between this, uh, the cardiac nucleus. Okay, German everything. They will be called as internal capsule. Okay, these fibers passing through the crest cerebri of the midbrain. Then they will reach the pons, uh, medulla, then spinal cord. So like this, only these fibers are crossing. Okay, passing. So you see, you, we already know crest cerebri contains descending fibers. In the middle two third, there is cortico spinal fibers, cortico nuclear fibers, cortico pontine fibers. They will be passing medially and laterally. In medial one six, you can see fronto pontine fibers. Lateral one six, you can see parieto pontine, temporo pontine, occipito pontine fibers. Okay, ma. So this is about the crest cerebri. The next thing will be about the substantia nigra. So this substantia nigra, it lies. See here, this is crest cerebri. This one we discussed. The next part is substantia nigra. It is uh, colorful. No, it is pigmented. Okay, it is here uh, pigmented band of gray matter. This is the pigmented band of gray matter. It is smooth above and it has its spikes below. Okay, it lies between which two parts? Between crest cerebri. And the tegmentum between crest cerebri and the tegmentum it lies it contains why it is pigmented means it contains melanin pigment iron and also the main function of substantia nigra is it synthesizes the dopamine it synthesizes the dopamine okay so in this picture also we can see this is the section of uh, midbrain this is the crest cerebri here you can see a pigmented part a crescent shaped part it has a smooth upper part and a spiky lower part and also it will be wide medially and narrow laterally and you can see this part itself divided into two this part is very pigmented it is little bit less this one is little bit uh, faint no this pigmented part is called as sparse compact arm this lightly stained part is named as pars reticular. Substantia nigra itself divided into pars compacta and pars reticulis. 
This sparse compact type contains more melanin pigment. The sparse reticularis it contains the iron. Okay. And what is the function of the substantial eye graph? It secretes the dopamine. Okay, well, so is it clear? So uh, crust cerebri, substantial eye graph, both will be same at the level of superior colliculus and at the level of inferior colliculus. But the remaining part, tegmentum, tectum, that is different at two levels. So individually, we have to discuss this. So first one is transverse section at the level of inferior colliculus. So at the level of inferior colliculus, we are going to discuss. Within that, first we are going to discuss about the gray matter. Then we are going to discuss about the white matter. Okay. So first one is, this is at the level of inferior colliculus. Now you can see this is the gray matter, central gray matter. So this is the cerebral aqueduct. You can see the gray matter. Within that, you can see two nucleus. One is trochlear nerve nucleus, another one is mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So, what are the things you can see at the level of inferior colliculus? So, inferiorly, you have to remember the trochlear nerve nucleus because uh, over the crust cerebral two nerves are isma, medially oblomotor nerve, laterally trochlear nerve are isma. So, both the nucleus will be located in the midbrain. Okay, you remember this one. So, within that gray matter, what you can see, mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve and trochlear nerve nucleus also will be seen. And also over the tectum, you can see nucleus of inferior colliculus. Nucleus of inferior colliculus that also we can see. Another one, we can see. We'll see in the next picture. So, first one. So, in gray matter, what are the things we have to see? Trochlear nerve nucleus, mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve, nucleus of inferior colliculus, and reticular formation. Yes. So see here, this is a reticular formation. So in gray matter, four things you have to uh, discuss. Uh, one is trochlear nerve nucleus, mesencephalic nucleus, nucleus of inferior colliculus. Then we have the reticular formation. So what are the uh, things? Trochlear nerve nucleus, where it lies? It lies posterior to the medial longitudinal fasciculus. See here, in this picture, it is shown as M. Okay, so you already know, presopons, middle, everything is over. No? Now you know this picture a little bit more. So this is the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Posterior to that, there is the trochlear nerve nucleus. Okay, then what is mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve? It receives the proprioceptive sensations. So trigeminal nerve, so it receives the proprioceptive sensations. Then the next one is nucleus of inferior colliculus. So it receives the afferent fibers from lateral limb discus. So in uh, medulla pons itself, it is discussed now what is lateral limb discus. These are the ascending fibers, they are concerned with hearing. Okay, so this nucleus, if we already know inferior colliculus, it contains a subcortical center for the auditory reflex now. So it should. Uh, uh, receive these fibers. Okay, so this inferior colliculus nucleus it receives the afferent fibers from lateral limb discus. This lateral limb discus is nothing but the ascending concern with the hearing. Okay, and from the inferior colliculus through the inferior brachium it reaches the medial geniculate body. So it sends different fibers to medial geniculate body through the inferior brachium. Okay, the next one is the reticular formation the next one is the reticular formation you can see this uh, zone okay reticular formation this is responsible for the sleep based wake cycle everything okay consciousness everything it is uh, depends on the reticular formation so four things you have to discuss in the gray matter inferior colliculus on the trochlear nucleus the next one is mesencephalic nucleus then nucleus of uh, uh, inferior colliculus and also reticular formation Okay, well, is it clear? See here, the same inferior colliculus connected to medial geniculate body through the inferior brachia. Okay, then we'll see about the white matter. What are the things seen in the white matter? See here, so the rest of the things are white matter. This is only gray matter. These and all white matter. So in this white matter, you can see decusation of superior cerebellar peduncles. Decusation of superior cerebral peduncles. Then you can see lemniscus. 
you are aware of this Leibniz Cosmo, it's already over. So, um, in this part, you can see medial lemniscus, trigeminal lemniscus, spinal lemniscus, lateral lemniscus. Medial, trigeminal, spinal, lateral lemniscus. Okay. So, in white matter, what are the things you have to see? First, uh, decussation of superior cerebellar fibers. Okay, decussation of superior cerebellar fibers. Then, four lemniscus are there. Medial lemniscus, trigeminal lemniscus, spinal lemniscus, lateral lemniscus. Then, medial longitudinal fasciculus, ectospinal tract, rubrospinal tract. Okay, medial longitudinal fasciculus, ectospinal tract, rubrospinal tract. Okay, this is at the level of inferior corticlus. At the level of inferior corticlus, what are the things you have to discuss? First, you have to discuss the first cerebrae, then substantia nigra, then within the uh, tectum and tegmentum, what you have to discuss? First, the gray matter. Within the gray matter, trochlear nerve nucleus, mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve. When you see the trochlear nerve nucleus, it gives rise to trochlear nerve. This trochlear nerve, it uh, forms a loop around the gray matter and it emerges from the posterior part of the midbrain. So this is the only nerve which arises posteriorly. The rest of the nerves, they are arising from the ventral surface. This is the MCQ question for you. So trochlear nerve is the only nerve that arises from the dorsal surface. Okay. So trochlear nerve gives rise to trochlear, uh, trochlear nerve nucleus, it gives rise to trochlear nerve. Then you can see mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve, then nucleus of inferior colliculus, which is concerned with hearing, then reticular formation. In white matter, what are the, what are the things are there? Superior cerebellar fibers, deposition, medial longitudinal fibers, fasciculus, tectospinal tract, microspinal tract, and four lemniscus, medial, trigeminal, spinal, and lateral lemniscus. Okay. So the inferior colliculus level is over. The next level is transverse section at the level of superior colliculus. So here also we have to discuss at, in the gray matter, five features of gray matter, features in the white matter. So these things are same only. This crust cerebrae, substantia nigra, both are same only. This thing only we have to discuss. So first we are going to discuss about this gray matter. What are the things in the gray matter around the cerebral aqueduct? You can see mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve, oplomotor nerve nucleus. Then within the oplomotor nucleus, one more nucleus is there, that is the Edinger principal nucleus. Lateral to the oplomotor nucleus, you can see medial longitudinal fasciculus. Then here you can see nucleus of superior colliculus. In front of that, you can see the pretectal nucleus. And also from the oplomotor nucleus, which now arise, that is the oplomotor now. So, gray matter. First, central gray matter is the, within the central gray matter, what is the oplomotor nucleus? Okay, what is the oplomotor nucleus? So, this is the oplomotor nucleus. This is at the level of superior colliculus. At the level of inferior colliculus, trochlear nerve nucleus is there. At the level of superior colliculus, oplomotor nucleus is there. So this oplomotor nucleus, it is bounded laterally by medial longitudinal fasciculus. So in this picture, you can see lateral to the oplomotor nucleus, medial longitudinal fasciculus is there. From the oplomotor nucleus, which nerve arises? That is oplomotor. So this nerve arises from this oplomotor nucleus passing through this medial longitudinal fasciculus, it passes through the white matter, it passes through the red nucleus present here, it passes through the substantia nigra, crust cerebrae, and it comes out. So, after arising from oplomotor nucleus, the oplomotor now it passes through tegmentum, red nucleus, medial part of crust cerebrae. We have one more nucleus that is located in the medial part of the oplomotor nucleus that is named as Edinger Westphal nucleus. Edinger Westphal nucleus. Did you heard about this Edinger Westphal nucleus in head and neck? Yeah. In peripheral parasympathetic ganglions. Yeah. Do you remember that? It is good. So uh, it is responsible for the uh, Reflex no pupillary reflex ciliary ganglion. Yeah. So that is the Edinger Vespal nucleus. That is also located within the oplomotor nucleus. One more nucleus we have in the gray matter. This is, that is the mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So do you, do you know what is mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve? See this trigeminal nerve nucleus, it is 
longer in the within that brain stem okay when you see it it will be present in the uh, mid brain within the pons and also in the medulla see mesencephalic nucleus main sensory nucleus then spinal nucleus so this is the longest uh, nucleus you can see see this is the oculomotor nucleus here you can see a small part that is the heading at this one nucleus okay well, now it's, it's clear no yeah so in at the superior colliculus level in the upper part only oculomotor nucleus inferior colliculus now inferior colliculus level means trochlear nerve nucleus okay see in upper part you have to remember oculomotor nucleus in superior colliculus in the lower part trochlear nerve nucleus okay now again we'll continue so the central gray matter it's over no central gray matter is over so these two nucleus we discussed the next one is nucleus of superior colliculus so it is responsible for the visual reflex uh, this visual reflex uh, they are uh, connected to lateral geniculate body through the superior brain so this already you know in front of this uh, superior colliculus we have one more nucleus that is named as pretectal nucleus pretectal nucleus this one is responsible for pupillary light reflex and consensual light reflex okay so here in this slide you can see what is superior colliculus nucleus it receives fibers afferent fibers from retina it passes through superior brachium and reaches the genitalateral genital body then there is pretectal nucleus this is responsible for pupillary light reflex and consensual light reflex one more important nucleus we have in the midbrain at the level of superior colliculus that is the red nucleus this red nucleus is mainly for integrating and a relay station for corticospinal fibers corticonuclear fibers and also cerebellar neurospinal fibers it connects all it connects the cerebral cortex it connects the cerebellum okay and it connects the midbrain and also spinal cord everything they are connected through the red nucleus so where it is see here within the white matter you can see a red structure no so this is the red nucleus why it is red in color means it is more vascular it is more vascular okay so in during dissection also you can see when you cut the midbrain and see you can able to see a pinkish color structure within the midbrain section so that is the red nucleus okay see here this picture represents the importance of red nucleus so this red nucleus it receives fibers from the motor cortex that is the cerebral cortex it receives fibers from the cerebellum and also it uh, here the integration occurs okay after that what happens it carries the fibers to the spinal cord so this is the main uh, part present in the midbrain it is integrating and it's a relay station for all these fibers okay so that is the red nucleus now what are the things we have to see in the white matter so two decussations will be there see can you, do you remember in inferior colliculus level only one decussation was there that is the decussation uh, that is the superior cerebellar uh, fibers decussate there but here two decussation as uh, there one is dorsal tegmental decussation of main nerve another one is ventral tegmental decussation of foramen dorsal tegmental decussation ventral tegmental decussation of foramen so what is the dorsal tegmental decussation of main nerve means there you can see decussation of fibers from superior colliculi ventral tegmental decussation means decussation of fibers from red nucleus that will be seen see we will discuss with picture see this is the white matter see white matter we are discussing the superior colliculus level that's why we can able to see the red nucleus here in red nucleus will be seen at the level of superior colliculus only okay so you can see two decussation dorsal tegmental decussation of main nerve ventral tegmental decussation of foramen so this dorsal tegmental decussation of main nerve it is due to decussation of fibers from superior colliculus okay this ventral tegmental decussation it is due to decussation of fibers from the red nucleus 
Okay, is it clear now? Okay, apart from that, what are the things we have? Medial longitudinal fasciculus will be there. Then three lemniscus will be there. Medial lemniscus, trigeminal lemniscus, spinal lemniscus. Why the lateral lemniscus is absent here? Anyone can answer this question? Why the lateral lemniscus we are not able to see at the level of superior probabilis? Anybody? What is what it carries? Lateral lemniscus carries the fibers for the hearing, no? So it should relay in the inferior colliculus, no? It already relate. It already relate at the inferior colliculus. So it won't see at this level. Do you understand that? So it, that lateral lemniscus carry the fibers up here. They reach the inferior colliculus. Inferior colliculus, it uh, transfer the fibers through the inferior brain to the medial longitudinal fasciculus. So that's over. So those fibers, it is not ascending ever further. So lateral lemniscus, you can't see in the, at the level of superior colliculus. So three lemniscus only we can see, one is medial, another one is trigeminal, another one is fine. Then dorsal and ventral tegmental fixations will be there. Then in this part, there will be medial longitudinal fasciculus. That also will be seen. See here, medial longitudinal fasciculus. So what is that medial longitudinal fasciculus? This is the one, it connects the all four cranial nerves. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth cranial nerves. They are connected with this medial longitudinal fasciculus. It is a longitudinal uh, uh, band-like thing. It is connected to all these four cranial nerves. Okay, so now the white matter also. Okay, so are you following this class? So whatever the things we discuss, what, what we discuss, first we gave an introduction, what is midbrain, where it is located, from where it arises. Then we discussed about the external features. In the external features, we discussed about the ventral surface, dorsal surface. Okay, ventral surface, crust cerebrae, we discussed. Then the interpedicular fossa, dorsal surface, parkour, quadrigemina, we discussed. And about the cruciform surface, we discussed. So that the external features are over. In internal features, we discussed uh, the segments of, of the membrane, like tectum, tegmentum, substantia nigra, crust cerebrae. Crust cerebrae, substantia nigra, they are same at both levels, like superior and inferior corpus. But the rest of the things are different. So we discussed it in two headings, like features in gray matter, features in white matter. Okay, so these two things we discussed for superior colliculus and for say inferior colliculus. Is it clear? Okay, so now we'll see about the blood supply of the midbrain. So this uh, midbrain, it is supplied by basilar artery, posterior cerebral artery, superior cerebellar artery, and also branches of posterior communicating artery, anterior parietal artery. I will show this in a picture. See here, this is the location of midbrain. See here, this is the midbrain of so this is located here. This is the basilar artery formed by the fusion of two vertebral arteries. They join and form the basilar artery. This basilar artery branches, see here, basilar artery branches that will supply the midbrain. Then you can see posterior cerebral artery, superior cerebral artery. This we already discussed now over the crest cerebrae. You can able to see these arteries. So branches from posterior cerebral artery, superior cerebral, cerebellar arteries, then branches from basilar artery, then branches from posterior communicating artery and also see here, this is the anterior parietal artery. So branches from anterior parietal artery. Everything, they supplies the midbrain. See the branches, basilar artery, posterior cerebral artery, superior cerebellar artery, branches from posterior communicating and anterior parietal artery. Okay. Okay, well, so this is basilar artery, posterior cerebral, superior cerebellar, anterior parietal, posterior communicating. Okay, few applied aspects we can discuss here. Okay, two syndromes, the uh, main syndromes we are going to discuss now. One is Weber syndrome. The first one is Weber syndrome. This occurs due to occlusion of posterior cerebral artery. You know it is applied by some of five arteries, no? So one artery is occluded means that particular part, it won't get blood supply. So uh, the uh, functions of those parts will be lost. Okay, so occlusion of branch of posterior cerebral artery, if it occurs, means it involves oclomotor nerve. See, the oclomotor nerve, it crosses here. No, this part is supplied with posterior cerebral. So if the function is lost, means this also will get affected. 
so it involves copula motor nerve and also the crest cerebri so the patient will present with these symptoms and signs the patient will have ipsilateral lateral squint and ptosis this is due to involvement of copula motor nerve contralateral hemiplegia because in crest cerebri we have corticospinal cord fibers no if it gets affected means there will be hemiplegia so contralateral hemiplegia will be there then there will be contralateral paralysis of lower part of face and tongue this is due to involvement of corticobulbar fibers corticobulbar means the fibers passing through the middle of okay so contralateral paralysis of lower part of face and tongue will be seen drooping of upper eyelid is seen due to oculomotor nerve damage the dilated and fixed pupil will be seen when the uh, edinger vesical nucleus sending fibers no if it's also uh, compressed or if it is also lost blood supply means the patient will have dilated fixed pupil okay so these are the signs and symptoms you can see in the weber syndrome okay this is the important part you may get some uh, questions here mcqs short notes and also in ospi also we can have some charts in the city okay the next syndrome is benetic syndrome what is benetic syndrome this occurs due to vascular ischemia of tegmentum of midbrain so that one is due to posterior cerebral artery involvement here this is due to ischemia of tegmentum this part not this crest cerebri this is the tegmentum part no when the tegmentum part is involved means what are the things will get affected see here this part medial meniscus spinal lemniscus then red nucleus then superior cerebellar peduncle this superior cerebellar peduncle then fibers of oculomotor nerve fibers of oculomotor nerve so everything will get affected if it compressed if it lost function means what will be seen in the patient the patient will have ipsilateral lateral squeam and ptosis due to involvement of oculomotor nerve fibers there will be contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensation due to involvement of trigeminal spinal lemniscus so this trigeminal spinal lemniscus they are carrying the pain temperature sensation so in spinal cord itself everything is discussed no so then contralateral loss of tactile muscle joint vibration sense it will be lost due to involvement of medial lemniscus because medial lemniscus it carries these uh, sensations okay tactile sensation vibration position sense everything and also the patient will lost the involuntary there will be they will be having involuntary movements tremors will be there this occurs due to involvement of red nucleus and also the fibers of superior cerebellar peduncles involved because of this the patient will have this. so they will have squint ptosis pain and temperature sensation lost contralaterally contralaterally tactile like uh, position vibration sense will be lost then contralateral tremors and involuntary movements will be there in the patient if the patient comes to you means you have to diagnose it as a benedict syndrome okay so two syndromes over up the next one is perinard syndrome what is perinard syndrome it occurs due to lesion at the superior corticus see this is the area of superior corticus no if it gets affected means so here only there is a pretectal nucleus and also the as uh, nucleus of superior corticus no if it affects means there will be loss of upward gaze so see this picture all the things the person can able to do but there is no upward gaze so this upward gaze will be lost in perinard syndrome the next one is arjay robertson pupil this occurs due to lesion in the pretectal nucleus Okay, you know, in front of uh, superior corticus, there is pretectal nucleus. So, if it gets affected, means the patient will have loss of light reflex, but accommodation reflex will be present. So, light reflex will be lost. That is the Agile Robertson pupil. Okay, Agile Robertson. So, everything we discussed. Okay, uh, midbrain. So, already you know medulla sponsa. So, you have an idea how to uh, deal with them. Uh, brain stem structures so, so in midbrain what you have to know uh, what is midbrain it is also called as mesencephalon it lies between the forebrain and the hindbrain so it extends from the cranial border of the pons to the diaphragm okay so here you can see so first what we discuss external features internal features so external features ventral and dorsal surface is there when ventral surface what we discuss cross cerebri we discuss median and laterally oculomotor trochlear nerves are there 
Then we discussed interpedicular fossa and its boundaries. Okay, so optic chiasma, optic tract, crust cerebri. Within that, we have the mammillary body. Uh, this is the infundibulum of uh, tuba sinarium. This is posterior perforated substance. In the dorsal surface, what we discussed four colliculus. That is the carpora quadrigemina, cruciform sulcus is there. In the upper end of cruciform sulcus, pineal gland is there. Okay, in the lower part, the uh, frenulum villi is there. So this is about the external features. Internal features, we discussed separately, crust cerebri and substantia nigra features. So crust cerebri will have the descending tracts. Substantia nigra, it is important for the uh, dopamine secretion. It contains melanin and also main content. Okay, and it has two compartments, pars compact and pars reticular. Okay, this two things will be same for both levels. But in the, in the rest of the things, tegmentum and tegmentum, it is different. See, this is the inferior colliculus level. In inferior colliculus level, you have to look for the troplean or nucleus. At the superior colliculus level, oplomata non nucleus will be there along with the ringer visible nucleus. Okay. Then, in, at the superior colliculus level, pretectal nucleus will be there. And also, the important thing, the red nucleus will be there, gray matter. Okay. Uh, in white matter, what you can see in the inferior colliculus level, four lemniscus will be there. See the lateral lemniscus, okay, medial trigeminal spinal lateral lemniscus, but here only three lemniscus will be there because lateral lemniscus it already related at the inferior colliculus level. Then reticular formation will be seen in, in at both levels. It's decusations. When you see at the inferior colliculus, only one decusation will be there. That is the decusation of superior cerebellar peduncles. Here, two decusations will be there, dorsal and Ventral tegmental decusations will be there. Okay, one. So internal features. Then we have to know the blood supply and the upgrade aspects. So this is about the midbrain. Okay, any doubts you have? Okay, you don't have any doubts? Yeah.